Okay, hon. So, so, so... Settlement squatters. Ah. How you identify? Is that a delusion too? Tanya, I'm gonna ca start calling you him. Are you cool with that? Is that okay? I, I, I'm going to decide who you are and I'm going to impose it upon you. And not just that, I'm going to oppress and ridicule and limit who you get to be, how you're going to dress. You can no what? longer dress in feminine clothing at all. No more makeup for you, Tanya. That's just not in the cars. That's a delusion. It's your delusion. And I'm going to step in and solve it. Or, and I'm just spitballing here, maybe we let people identify with who they are and just respect. Okay. Nobody is really stopping you from dressing whatever, however you want and talking and having a certain behavior and doing whatever you want. Yeah. So that's up to you. It's a free society, especially like if you live in the Western Europe or North America, whatever. God bless your heart. You can do that. It's just when it comes to others playing into your delusions, that's where the issue comes. Because the world mostly doesn't care about you. But you want everyone to accept whatever narcissistic ideas you have about yourself. And that's the truth. You're not really that important or relevant. Nobody cares about what you do. Just live your life however you want and shut up. I want to let you know what's going on in our state in regards to LGBT policy. Mm -hmm. We're getting new information from the state level, from Governor Yunkin, that we have to amend our policies to align with his new plan to try to give parents more rights in education. And that sounds nice, but it's ultimately going to hurt kids because it's going to cause educators to not be able to use the correct name and pronoun that students are telling us to use. It's yeah. going to require us to go to parents to get uh, approval before we can use the correct pronouns and that's really going to hurt kids and unsupportive families. We also have to amend our policies to no longer allow students to play sports or go to the bathroom with their gender and instead go to the one that matches their gender at birth. So keep watching what's going on in Virginia. We're fighting. These people, they're all child, you know what, they care so much about children for one simple reason. It's like we all know what that reason is. Every single time an adult is so concerned with a child's um, sexuality, desires, whatever they identify as, trans, this, that, whatever. It's just when they indoctrinate, they do that for one reason and one reason only. And we all know what that reason is. If you are so mentally ill and evil that you care so much about little children doing that stuff, it's just like you, you, you should be in prison. AFC, shame on you! Shame on you! Stop supporting genocide! Stop supporting genocide! Boycott, boycott Israel! Boycott, boycott Israel! Boycott, boycott KFC! Boycott, boycott KFC! Boycott, boycott Israel! Boycott, boycott Israel! Boycott, boycott KFC! Boycott, boycott KFC! Nadine, thank you very much for the gift. Nadine, thank you. People support Israel. We are just here today to boycott KFC. KFC is supporting Israel. What we're seeing here is just usually middle class or upper upper middle class white kids from rich households. Obviously, they have no use in society. They have no goals. They have no uh, cultural roots of any kind. So they will just pick whatever mainstream cause it is. Then they just latch onto it like, hey, look at me. I'm important now. I I am advocating for something even though they have no idea about any historical context or anything at all really it's just like they just pick like whatever social justice issue whatever is mainstream 
and they'll just go with it and that's it they just sleep better at night and they feel more important but other than that these are just one of the dumbest idiots people that you will ever find in society and also the most useless by the way they're like they, they they don't work anything they're up in the middle of the day doing activism Ugh. what kind of things like make you not necessarily as proud to be american assimilation of a lot of cultures like there's a um, food truck that i got a burrito from mm. and i got salsa mm. and it was like tomato juice and so i was like okay how are y'all gonna like use someone's culture and then like appropriate it said the man appropriating women yeah exactly like this guy is mocking women because i barely find women that talk like that and that that girly but they are just mimicking what they think an actual woman talks and sounds like even though that's not really the case for most women on this planet and i say this because the climate crisis is not the past mm -hmm. the climate crisis is not a result of natural disasters it's actually man-made mm -hmm. it's a result of the fact that we are living in a Okay, uh, this has to be a parody of something, but unfortunately it isn't. So uh, what's happening here, you see all these people that have a racial hatred towards white people, they will somehow slip through the cracks and be in position of power somehow, uh, where they just get to spew their uh, bullshit and that's pretty much it. She's not gonna go to China or India to make these speeches. Because why would she, even though those two countries are the biggest polluters on the planet by far and they litter like crazy and they have just the most atrocious situation when it comes to pollution. It's just unbelievably polluted, that whole area of the planet. She's not gonna go there, because why go there? They will not tolerate this type of behavior. It's only happening in uh, Western uh, countries for for a simple reason. And that reason is they want to control you. They want to tax you more. They want to control what you say, when you say, how you do it, when you do it, and so on. And they will use whatever boogeyman they can. In this case, climate change. When Leah Thomas gets on the block, when they're about to start a race. How does the audience react to this? Uh, as you what can imagine, right? Testing. Like, there was a lot of silence. Uh, a lot of people didn't really know what to do. There wasn't a lot of clapping. There was a lot of, like, protesters and, like, trans rights activists who were there who were being yeah. loud and the posters and blah, blah, blah. Uh, lots of booing. Uh, Kelly J. Keene was there, who is a phenomenal women's rights activist out of England and she was there and, and she I'll never forget I'm standing on the pool deck and at this point in time like of course me and all my teammates and my coaches we all knew this was wrong but it's still I didn't know how to talk about it or what to say or what outlet to go to and I remember hearing her from the stands um, and she just said something that we were all thinking and she yelled so loud he's a cheater and I was like oh my gosh I needed to hear that Yes, that is the most correct statement that I've ever heard all year. Leah Thomas, whatever the original name is, that's just a dude that wasn't really good at swimming, yeah, took some hormones, grew the hair and now all of a sudden, hey, I'm a female and of course uh, he's gonna excel because, because that's how it is. And if you want to cheat your way through life, this, exa uh, this is exactly how you do it. I think the Hondurans, Mexicans, Nicaraguans, El Salvadorians, Panamanians, Venezuelans, Chileans, they should all go home. Oh, really? If they're here illegally, <laughs> yes. But like I said before, these people have been devastated by, in the past, these countries are poor. I, I don't care. Been... Go really? fix your own country. Don't come to our how? country. How? Because we that up in the first place. Hold, hold on a second. How do we screw up El Salvador? Yeah. No, no, tell me. How did we screw up El Salvador? 
Can anyone tell me? The drug me. war. Oh, the drug war is our fault? No, the drug war was the I mean, cartels the CIA, the CIA. of native Boran gangs that transformed themselves into violent groups in El Salvador in the western part of Mexico, and somehow that's America's fault? So, I mean, the CIA the did facilitate. Hold on. It's the cartel that is the ones that are trafficking the people into this country, and they're working right now at the southern border, 15,000 people a day. I'm not going to all of a sudden be like, you know what? I feel so sorry for the person that from Venezuela that came all the way here, broke the law, illegally domiciled themselves. Like, no, go back to Caracas and make Caracas great again. A lot of women are actually war heroes <laughs> just as much as men are. That's why we lose all the war. I wouldn't go there. Where? <laughs> I'm okay with them going in to cook eyes, mm. so and you know, that kind of stuff. In Medicare but, and do and be right, nurses and stuff. Right. But not to be at war with the men, you know. I look at that as like toxic masculinity where you feel like only men have to be the ones fighting wars. Right. Women are just as capable of holding a gun, shooting a gun, You can fighting shoot a, a monkey to hold a gun, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I just feel like... Am I right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, so you can teach a monkey to hold a gun, but the monkey not going to be good as the man. I think men and women are equal. What's Play equal about men and women? The fact that they're just as capable as getting an education, they're just as capable as obtaining a degree. A monkey can get an education. A monkey can't get a degree because monkeys yes, aren't allowed monkey, in school. I know many monkeys with degrees. <laughs> Nobody's saying women aren't capable of doing X, Y, and Z, right? But we as a species, we protect women first and foremost because they give birth to the future generation. A, a man can impregnate like 10, 20 women a month or whatever, whereas a woman cannot have 20 kids a month, y you know what I mean? So obviously we're gonna protect the woman and we as men we go and provide, we fight the wars and we do all that stuff because that's the correct thing to do. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs>